Okay, let's get started. So good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for joining our panel about university life at the University of Toronto. We're excited to share some information about campus life, academics, and extracurriculars. But before we get into it, I just wanted to share a little bit about myself and the organization running the panel, STEM Fellowship. So my name is Mira, and I'm a mentorship coordinator with STEM Fellowship. We're an organization that works to engage students interested in science, technology, engineering, and math through events, workshops, and mentorship. The aspect of STEM Fellowship that I'm involved with is mentorship, where we pair um, high school and university mentees with younger men um, mentors with the younger mentees to learn about university life, science extracurriculars, and applications. More information and an application to this mentorship program can be found on our website, which is stemfellowship.org. If you're interested in attending more panels like this, we have another one coming up on Thursday, which is about McMaster University. Um, if you haven't registered for that already, we will send this link by email alongside the recording of this panel. Now, let's get started with an agenda for this panel. Today's seminar will start with an introduction of the panelists, some broad questions about their university experience, a speed round of questions, and then a Q&A, where you have the opportunity to type your questions in the chat for the ch panelists to answer. Please save your questions for the end, and you can either type them in the chat or privately message them to me, and I will ask the questions. If you want to ask questions to a specific panelist, please type four and then the panel's name before your question, and write them in the general chat or a private message to me. So let's get started with the introduction of our first panelist. Uh, hi, everybody. I'm Robert. Uh, I just graduated from U of T in the engineering science program over there. Uh, the picture you see on the right is a picture of the dining hall at Trinity College. Uh, I lived at Trinity College for my four years of undergrad, and I can confidently say that the dining hall here makes you feel, number one, like you're in Harry Potter, and number two, uh, makes you really, really well fed. So I would highly recommend hanging out in there at some point in your university time, should you come to Toronto. Hi everyone, I'm Nicole. I might be the youngest panelist here. I just finished my first year in life sciences. I'm actually going into health studies and sociology for my second year. Um, this photo here, I took this, uh, I think this is the medical science building. Uh, I definitely remember going here a lot because it was right beside my chem class. Um, but yeah, I just took this photo, I thought it was nice. And that's about it. Hello everyone, uh, I'm Gabriel. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm going into my fourth year. I'm studying genetics and biotech. Um, yeah, so this picture here on the right is uh, kind of down by the harbor front. Obviously, the University of Toronto is in Toronto and it's a beautiful city, so there's lots to take, lots to take advantage of. Hi, my name's Matt. Um, I'm the same program as Roger, or Robert. Sorry, uh, I just finished my third year. I'm in the biomedical systems option, and next year I'm going on PUI, uh, which is a type of co-op year offered at the University of Toronto. Um, yeah, and I lived at Innes College um, throughout my four years here. And this is a photo from Nicole, taken from Woodsworth, and you can see Innes um, in the in the foreground there. It's, you can also see the skyline in Toronto, which is quite nice. Hi everyone. Um, my name is Jamie. So my picture isn't on here, but I am a I'm going into third year and I'm in a business and statistics student. Um, a fun fact about me is that I really, really like to travel and I would love to go to Iceland one day. Thank you so much to the panelists for being here. So let's get started into the main general questions of this panel. So our first question is, what influenced your decision to enroll in this program at the University of Toronto? And what makes it unique and special to you? Uh, I, can, I can start with that one. Um, I think from my personal experience coming in uh, the first year, I don't think I was that well informed on the different programs that were available to me. And I was kind of, uh, feeling out uh, where I want to go as, as it came close to the deadline to choose. Um, for me, I was very interested in, in biomedical sciences or so biology, but also engineering. And I'd kind of narrowed it down to uh, U of T, Waterloo, and uh, the HealthSci Biomed Co-op program at McMaster that was just getting started. And um, 
I think the reason I chose to go to U of T was just because of my, my visit there. I really got to kind of explore what engineering means at U of T and the community there. And it, it really surprised me, actually. I wasn't, uh, wasn't expecting what I experienced there um, and the kind of sort of uh, camaraderie, camaraderie or uh, the feeling of teamwork that is, is through the, the, the engineering program there. So after visiting the three campuses and, and kind of uh, getting to know what the, the values of the program were or what the goal of each program was trying to teach you, I felt that uh, engineering science at U of T was definitely what aligned with me most and uh, where I wanted to go. Uh, yeah, I could follow up on that a little bit with respect to engineering science in particular. Uh, I know this is probably a decision that a lot of you on the call are going to have to be making where you're trying to decide, uh, you know, which engineering program to go to or whether you do more of a science-based program or an engineering-based program. And I think what really influenced my decision to go to engineering science was Number one, the focus that this engineering program had on the natural sciences, where it gave you an option to do stuff like physics and chemistry, that you can't really do a lot of in a theoretical sense in a lot of other programs. And number two, uh, it's really great in the engineering world because it lets you defer your decision in what to specialize in for a whole two years. So if you don't really know what you're doing, it's a great place to go and get a little bit more experience in everything before making choices. Um, I can go next. I can kind of speak on kind of the life side, um, side of things. Um, the good thing about U of T, I think, is um, for the first year, you take a lot of sort of general courses and you get a good basis. And after that, you have kind of a whole bunch of different streams you can go into, which can be difficult, but it's also very valuable to have a wide range of programs that you want to go into. So for me personally, I, I was really unsure after my first year what I wanted to go into. But as you start taking like the introductory courses to certain programs, you really get a feel of which program you really want to go into. And I guess I can leave you with just don't be too hung up on it because it's very easy to kind of switch your program, especially in the life sciences. I've, I've added minors, dropped minors a couple of times. So there's really a lot of flexibility since you have that good basis in your first year. Yeah, to add on to that, I think that was a very similar reason why I chose life sci for my first year. Because in high school, I wasn't really sure what I was interested in. I just knew that I liked science in high school. So um, I think the UFT Life Science program, especially first year, it gives you a lot of uh, room to explore different interests. And you don't always have to take like all life science courses. There's a lot of different courses in the arts and science faculty. Um, so it let me try different things and really find out what my, I was interested in. Um, for me, I was a little bit different in high school. I've always really liked talking to people and solving problems. So when it came to figuring out and deciding what I wanted to do in university, I also had that um, interest of mine in terms of analytics and just getting to um, know, better understand statistics and how it works. And that was one of the reasons why I decided to uh, major in both business as well as stats because um, it allowed me to combine both of my interests together. Great, so we heard some amazing things about the panelists about what drew them to the University of Toronto. But our second question is, what is a typical day or week in your program like? Uh, I guess I could start off. Um, yeah, so it kind of uh, depends on which courses you're taking in the life size stream. Um, depending on if you have a lot of labs, you could be in the lab in the morning or courses. Uh, generally in first year, you get the earlier classes, but as you kind of go along in your upper years, you have a lot more flexibility in your schedule and you have a lot more free time. But uh, yeah, the, the course load for life sciences, it's not too, too heavy. It's definitely a lot of work, but especially when you have, have a, a, a kind of lab intensive schedule, but you definitely still have a lot of time to do extracurriculars and just hang out with friends. So um, yeah. Yeah, to, so to speak more about the labs. So um, I guess in first year, almost everyone is going to be in bio and chem labs. So you'll have those bi-weekly, uh, usually you have like your chem lab and then the next week you have your bio lab. So every week you have a lab. So um, those were probably the longest like period of time that you would be in a certain area because usually first year courses are an hour or two hours. 
and then I know that when you get into upper years, they just become like three hour blocks. Um, but yeah, so for my first year, uh, I did experience that you have class almost every day and probably like three ish classes a day. Um, but I do know that that changes as you go into your upper years. Um, I could speak a little bit about the engineering side of things. Uh, for us, our schedule ends up being a lot more regimented, especially in the first and second years. Uh, thinking back to my first year schedule, we had roughly uh, roughly a nine to five from Monday to Friday every day. So you kind of come to campus at nine, you have classes until five o'clock or so with an hour or two hours of break in between. So you kind of be in class with your peers until five and then at five you kind of go and spend time doing homework, getting involved in extracurriculars or, uh, you know, getting food and just sort of hanging out. Yeah, just to add on to that, I think uh, I think something I forgot to mention earlier is that I've also been a resident of Ston for the past uh, two years, which has given me a lot of perspective on, you know, engineering, life science and the differences between them. I think um, engineering, a lot of times you'll hear that yeah, there definitely is a lot of class. As Robert mentioned, you'll have probably close to 40 hours of class a week um, in your first two years. And you don't really have much choice and well, you don't have any choice really in, in where your classes are going to be um, at the time of the day. Um, but in that way, it's a lot more similar to high school, I feel. Um, you are uh, going to class every day from a certain time to a uh, certain time. Um, and if in high school, you have close to 40 hours of class a week as well. Um, in that way, most of your school time is going to be in class in lecture or tutorials. And there's, I guess, less of that uh, doing independent, um, I guess, like essays or projects like that outside of, of school. So in that way, engineering does have a, a very heavy workload on, on paper, but sometimes not as much as you might think. Um, I can definitely agree with what the other panelists said. Definitely in the first two years, especially, you do have a lot more classes. Like I had classes almost every day along with tutorials. But as you get um, up into the upper years, you have a little bit more flexibility. Um, so for me, entering third year, I um, was able to manage and schedule my classes where I was able to get a day off. Uh, one thing I'd like to add is for life sciences, especially like in your first years, first and second years, like our, um, we have a lot more space to take kind of like electives. So yeah, depending on your schedule, you can schedule those in for what worked best for you. And uh, yeah, you just have a lot more freedom, I think in the life side program. Uh, also to add on to that, um, uh, this is kind of like a tangential thing, but on the subject of electives, uh, if there's stuff that you're interested in and you have space in your program and you've always thought like, wow, I really wish I knew something about Russian literature, I'd highly recommend you take those courses in like first and second year. Uh, those electives are like really cool. They really open your perspective and get you to think about stuff you wouldn't think about before. And like I've really benefited from all the random electives that I've taken in my program. It's great to hear about all the diversity of courses and electives that so many of our panelists take part in from different programs. Um, so this year, we know that um, the majority of university classes are going to be online. So I just wanted to ask the panelists, how do you stay focused having to work and study from home with frequent online classes and meetings? Um, I can start with this one. Um, I think it's something new for all of us that we would have only experienced for like the last month and a half of, of school in the previous year, unless you took summer courses, maybe other panelists can talk about that. Um, I think for me, it was the, the main thing was really uh, getting into a routine um, so that rather than, you know, you are at your, your house or your residence, um, which is quite different from going to school every day um, and getting out of the building. But if you build that, that schedule in um, to like, uh, separate school time from home time that's uh, really going to benefit you in staying focused uh, for on your studies especially in the engineering program where you, you your class hours don't change you're still going to have the same amount of class to attend uh, to make sure that one you're separating your class so that uh, you can stay focused on that but also separating your free time so you're not going to burn out um, so you're still practicing self-care and taking care of yourself um, because although there's kind of the notion of you have more time with these uh, online learning things. Um, you can kind of schedule it um, on 
something that's convenient for you, it can definitely get taxing if you're always worrying about something throughout the entire day. Yeah, I would definitely agree with Matthew, just kind of setting up a daily schedule and doing and just as if you were in person, but just at home and separating that block of time to do school and then having your free time later. So really separating home from school is very important. But what I also found helpful is just like contacting your friends, supporting them, getting them to support you as well, so that, you know, you're not the only, you don't feel like you're the only one going to class, you're going along with your peers as well. Um, I'm actually taking some summer courses right now so I can speak on my experience with online learning. I think what definitely helped me with um, online learning is developing a schedule as um, the other two panelists have said earlier. Uh, for me, I tend to uh, create a study schedule. So I would dedicate a block of time studying for this course and another block of time studying for another course. And what I found interesting about online learning is that um, you're able to, some of the lectures are recorded, so you can go back and rewatch them. For instance, I do have a conflict between some of my classes where um, they both occur at the same time. So one of the good things about online learning is that I'm able to go to one class and then watch the other lecture later, so I don't have to uh, move uh, between the two classes. Um, in terms of tips for how to keep the schedule, that seems to be such an important recurring theme. What I found really helpful was uh, not just blocking out particular times of my day for different activities, but also blocking out a particular space for work. So I started trying to do this by working in my room and I found it really, really distracting because like there's like a lot of different stuff in my room. It's kind of like a place that I associate with just like relaxing. And so I like found a different room in my house and kind of devoted only school to that room. And that really helped me focus and stay to that schedule a little bit more religiously. Um, yeah, to add on, I definitely agree with really separating your space. I think I took one summer school course this summer and at the beginning was honestly so hard to focus, especially like being back home with family. It's always loud. Um, so it definitely helped to separate my space. And also another good tip is just making sure the space you're working in is very tidy. I think if there's just stuff around, it gets really distracting. Even just having your phone beside you can be distracting, even if you're not looking at it. So like completely putting your phone and like other electronics that you're not using away can actually really help um, for your focus. Yeah. That's great to hear about all the tips that our panelists have. Um, so notice that we've gotten some questions in the chat and we'll answer them most at the end. But um, our next question is, what do you do on campus in your spare time? And do you, have you joined any clubs or sports? One of the questions in the chat was about research opportunities. So um, we could also touch on that as well. All right, I can, I can start on this one as well. Um, I think this is uh, quite an important uh, part of university life is uh, what you're doing outside of class. Um, it really what, is what makes your experience. And um, at, a, at a big university like uh, U of T, there's, uh, I'd like to say something for everyone. Um, so what I do in my spare time, I'm quite interested in athletics. So I do a lot of intramural sports, which I uh, find quite fun. Um, as well as uh, I previously mentioned, I'm a Don at Innis College. So Innis College is not an engineering residence, but uh, is, it's uh, arts and science, uh, like mainly arts and science residence. So uh, there's lots of other uh, events and clubs there that I also take part in and, and participate in, such uh, like movie nights or um, there's something called the Residence Council at, at Innis, which is uh, do a lot of fun activities in that way as well. So there's usually, there's like something for everyone everywhere. Um, and then, to touch on research opportunities. Um, there's, yeah, there's lots of research opportunities at the University of Toronto. Um, me personally, I live in London, Ontario, which is a little bit, uh, two hours away from Toronto and I've found research opportunities uh, there. I think the question mentioned, uh, are there opportunities available for people straight out of first year or uh, from high school? Um, I personally did research, I've done research after every, uh, Every, every summer after school, so after my first year through to, to now. And uh, yeah, it's quite the valuable experience. Um, you just have to, I guess, put yourself out there um, and, and ask around. Don't be, don't be scared that if you have little experience, that's how you build experiences by, by uh, reaching out and doing things like that. 
Um, I've also heard of, of students that are even able to get research experience before they even start their university career. So if you're uh, ambitious or you're really motivated to do that, then yeah, for sure, it's definitely a possibility. Yeah, uh, I can go next. Uh, so obviously living in Toronto, there's a lot to do. It's a beautiful city. I'm not personally from Toronto. I'm from out west. I'm from Edmonton, Alberta. So being in Toronto is something that I absolutely love. And there's always a lot going on in the city. So yeah, like Matthew said, like a big part of your university experience is what you do outside of class. And for me personally, like my experiences outside of class is really what made my, my university experience. And I still got one more year of that to enjoy. Um, yeah, so in terms of uh, extracurriculars, I guess uh, I, I'm a varsity athlete, so I am quite busy with that. So yeah, a lot of training, a lot of work, but it's also a lot of fun. Um, outside of that, obviously STEM fellowship, we run events and stuff like that. There's lots of that to do. Uh, in first year, I lived on residence. So yeah, like Matthew said, there's a lots of events there. There's residence council you can get involved with. There's events almost like every night of the week that you can go to. Um, in terms of research opportunities, as Matthew said, again, like there's a lot at the university. Like it's, I think U of T is a very research intensive university and uh, for life size students as well. Like there's, there's four or five hospitals just right downtown and they all have kind of research institutes associated with them. So for me personally, I work at one lab at the university and I also work at Sick Kids Hospital in a research lab there. So it's definitely a little difficult to get your first one, but once you get your first one and you start talking to people, um, the opportunities kind of open up, but it's really just being persistent, finding the ones that you're really interested in, because I think the PIs or the professors can really tell when you're actually kind of passionate about a subject or you're just trying to get something on your resume. So I think it's really important to find a topic that you enjoy because not only will you be kind of more diligent and more enthusiastic about your work, it'll really be re reflected in the stuff that you do. Um, I would definitely recommend to, um, especially for incoming first year students to join clubs. It's definitely a great way to meet other students. Personally for me, my first few years of university, I was part of an accounting club. And actually this year we planned a case competition with all three campuses. Um, so it was between Rotman, UTSC, as well as UTM. And we worked together to plan an accounting conference that happened in March. Uh, yeah, adding on to the value of clubs and cool stuff you can do. One thing that's really great for engineering, but also it's really easy to get involved with if you're not an engineer, is design teams. You have a whole bunch of teams building a whole bunch of incredibly cool things from self-driving cars to like human-powered helicopters to pretty much whatever you could possibly think of. And it's a great way to like kind of take some of the stuff that you learned in the classroom and apply it in real life. And that's a really cool process to see. Plus, by virtue of working on something uh, together with a whole bunch of people, uh, you become really, really close to who you're working on this project with. So it's a great way to make friends too. Uh, that being said, I'd say, well, design teams are important. Uh, I'd like to go back to what Matthew said and say that like staying physically active is really, really, really important. And I think a lot of us, especially in first year, get super busy and like start forgetting to go to the gym or choose not to join an intramural club. And I'd really recommend like finding some way, whatever works for you, to build that sort of stuff into your daily routine when you start. Uh, in terms of research opportunities, a lot of great things have been said. There's a lot of research available at U University of Toronto. Honestly, I found it a little bit difficult in first year to kind of get my foot in the door for the first time. But um, the tricks that seem to work generally is like, if you're really interested in research, you know, be persistent, don't be afraid to cold call people, and also try to start asking around a little bit earlier. Uh, that'll always be your advantage. Um, just to add on, I would definitely recommend a physical exercise is very important. Um, you pay for your gym membership, so might as well use it and take advantage of it. Uh, I wanted to speak a little bit about my experience. So um, I'm actually a commuter student. So I think for me, a, like something that I really enjoyed doing whenever I had free time was just exploring the campus. I think that because I wasn't on res, it was kind of hard for me to get to know the other parts of the campus because the campus is like humongous. Um, but also I would always just be going to like the same buildings because I would always just like go to my class then the next class then go home. So whenever I had time, I just like went to different libraries, um, like went to different like restaurants or cafes near um, U of T. And it was really nice. I think it really um, helped me to like Toronto more and I think um, 
it's just like really fun exploring. So I think that's something that I definitely recommend it, whether or not you're a commuter student, um, exploring Toronto is something that is super fun. I definitely recommend. Yeah, just one more thing to add about clubs. Uh, also, although there's like so many options at U of T, which is really great that you'll probably find something that you're looking for. It can also be a bit overwhelming because there's so many things you don't know, like I want to join all these clubs, but I don't know if I have the time. Um, something that I, I learned from my first year after like finding all these things I was interested in is that um, the, the other people in the club are also university students and they know that you're busy. Um, so don't be afraid to join uh, clubs and then realize it's not for you and, and, and pass. Um, I, to be honest, joined like probably 15 clubs in my first month of university and only really got involved with, with one or two. And uh, that's just perfectly fine. Just you can test out all the waters uh, and then find what you're looking for and just commit to, to what you feel fits you best. We also have a follow-up question for Nicole, um, specifically about getting involved on campus. So how do you make friends outside of class when you're commuting or living off campus? So I think um, one of the ways I met a lot of my friends was through orientation week. I know that's going to be looking a little different this year. I'm not sure if colleges are intending to make that online. It probably will be. Um, but through that, I definitely met a lot of people and then kept in touch with them and then just kind of followed up and met up with them. But I actually did meet a lot of people in class. I think that um, there's this notion of like, no one's gonna wanna talk to you in class kind of thing. But I found that like whenever I sat down, especially like the first few weeks, everyone wants to make friends. Like everyone is asking like, what's your name? Like, what's your Instagram, whatever. Um, so just like, you gotta be kind of extroverted during the first few weeks and reach out, talk to the people around you, follow up with them. I think that's, actually the main way I met friends and then also I guess the club piece comes in there too as a commuter student there's actually I think at every college they have like a non-residence council kind of thing so I'm part of Trinity College and we have something called NRAC which is like non-residence affairs council and they hold a lot of events so I went to a lot of those and then I got to meet other commuter students as well Perfect. That's great to hear. Um, we've gotten a lot of questions about applying to the programs that you're in. Um, so I just wanted to ask a question about that. If you had any advice for um, high school students applying to the program. Um, a lot of our attendees seem to be interested in um, putting their best foot forward in terms of academics and any supplementary applications that are required for U of T. Uh, yeah, sure. I could, I could start with this one. Um, I guess um, there's, there's kind of like two uh, forks of the prong over here. Number one, we have the question of, you know, academics and putting your best forward, put forward there. And then number two, it's the question of your best extracurricular um, profile. How does that go? Um, I guess um, with the academics thing, my advice is, I mean, don't, don't stress too much. As long as you're getting marks that are within the ballpark of where you need to be for the university uh, you're doing a good job I honestly don't think that being at like and I know especially the way that grades are now in high school the difference between like a 96 or a 97 is not going to make and break your entire future just like make sure that you're in the relative ballparks and you'll be okay uh, a place where a lot of distinguishing does happen at least this is I'm, I'm thinking back to a call I was on with the in like an engineering science version of this event and they did mention that they take a really big look at your personal application statement to try to build really the best crop of kids coming in. So I would say make sure you don't go and uh, neglect that. Uh, put in the right amount of time to make sure that you've really talked about who you are, why you want to be uh, in the program that you're in, and really talk about all of the different extracurricular activities that you've done that have um, increased your profile. Uh, yeah, to add to that, I'm kind of scrolling through all the questions here, and there's going to be a lot of questions about uh, IB and AP. Um, I think SL, HL, those are IB terms. Um, maybe one of the other panelists can speak a lot on that, but from my perspective, uh, just to, to kind of give a different uh, point of view, I didn't take AP or IB. It wasn't offered at my high school. Um, and I actually didn't really know what they were <laughs> until I came to U of T. So um, it's definitely not like a requirement. Um, 
it could be something that may stand out on your application, but it's not something that's make or break. Um, as for what courses you should take uh, in high school, I, I'm not sure if they're actually looking at uh, the name of the course, right? They're kind of just seeing what, what, you're, what you were like in high school and how things, so don't put too much stress on what courses you're taking. Uh, do what interests you, do what you think is uh, best suits you. Um, there's also, I think I saw a question about Waterloo. Um, U of T and Waterloo are both, I guess, very um, academic oriented universities. And they have pretty high standards when it comes to uh, admission averages and such. Um, but I, I don't think there's too much of a difference between their philosophies in that way. And uh, if, you're, if you're planning on coming to U of T or Waterloo, um, you can probably uh, kill two burns with one stone, as to say it, as uh, uh, in your application uh, strategy. Um, I guess for me, I don't, in, applying for university was kind of a stressful process and I know that you're always wondering, oh, are my grades good enough to have enough extracurriculars? But I mean, you just have to be honest on your applications, put the things that you've done, do put the things that you're interested in, because I think honesty really shows in your applications. Um, I, you, I know sometimes you might think that, oh, they're looking for this, 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 and this, but it's not so formulaic, right? If, if you're, you're enrolled and if you're involved in things that you're really interested in and it shows and it shows on your resume and it shows on the initiatives you take part of, then it'll really be reflective in your, uh, in your applications to the university. So, I mean, it's not something to stress too much about, just, just try your best. If, if you get in, you get in, if you don't, you don't, it's, I mean, you're just putting your best foot forward and then from there you can't really do so much but just try to do your best in the meantime but after that you don't need to stress too much about it and i'm sure everyone here you know you're taking initiative you're already on a on a good track to to, to being accepted so just don't stress too much about it Um, to add on to kind of what Matthew said about like the whole AP IB thing, my high school also didn't offer um, IB when I was going into it and there was only one or two AP classes. So I took calculus um, AP calc in grade 12, um, but the exam I took was the calculus AB exam and that's the only um, AP credit that U of T will not acknowledge. Um, so make sure you kind of look into which exams they'll actually count as a extra credit like a credit um for your uh transcript because if you do have ib or ap credits then they do get transferred over um and i think the benefit of that like from seeing my friends who had those credits um was that they were during first year they were able to take like a lighter course load uh, which meant they could focus more on the other classes which obviously like that has that its own advantages um or they were able to um, just take other courses that they were interested in. Um, so I think that there is um, a benefit there. However, um, I, like, I think a lot of students who didn't take AP or IP might be worried that there have to be in classes with all these students who have probably learned um, a lot more and those kinds of worries. But I think U of T first year especially does a really good job in kind of leveling the field. Like everyone is taught kind of um it's it, they don't expect you to know like so much so they kind of like go through everything and so by the end of first year everyone kind of knows the same amount of information so yeah not to worry too much if that's something you're worried about yeah something i'd like to add is that i see a lot on kind of like grades and stuff in the the question and answer section so obviously for us we're not involved in that process but a good thing to do would be contacting the departments you're interested in contacting the enrollment office and they can obviously give you a lot more specifics on what they're looking for in the applications and kind of the grade cutoffs and whatnot yeah um another thing about uh applying in particular with the personal profile just because looking at the chat it seems like there's a lot of questions about you know what sort of activities are good for you know influentially getting into these programs um, in my experience doing applications things, I really see like there being three kind of core values of extracurricular activities that you put on your profile. Uh, value number one is kind of commitment. So asking the question like this thing that you're putting on there, is this something that you've done for a long time? Because if you've done it for a long time, 
that shows that you know you're you're able to like start something, be passionate about it, and follow through with it. Uh, like value number two that shows up and is really important is sort of excellence. So you know, in whatever you did, did you achieve excellence? Or do you have any like meaningful recognition for the skill level or capacity that you've developed in that area? And then the third thing that I found to be really important in these uh, extracurricular activities is sort of initiative. So did you kind of like go out of your way and to start something or to do something that nobody else was doing and uh, like take your own initiative to, to make something happen in some way? Uh, I see these as like three sort of values slash like sort of axes that you can measure how good an extracurricular is. Uh, of course, you don't have to do all three of these values in every extracurricular activity you do. I definitely will sometimes leaning more towards one side of things than the other side of things. But I think that's like a good framework to ask the question, you know, what should I do? Uh, things that will kind of like highlight those three uh, values. And that kind of just comes from being passionate about what you're doing. Yeah, just to add on, I think Robert touched on like some really great points there. Um, it kind of summarizes everything to do with extracurricular. But I wanted to just kind of reiterate something that Gabriel mentioned earlier is that um, for me, I think the most important thing is to actually be interested in, enjoy what you're doing. Uh, choose something that you're, you're passionate about. Don't just try to um, find something to put on your resume because if you're passionate about something, if you're really interested, that's what's going to push you to, you know, to excel or to, commit to it, right? Um, and that's, uh, I think the best thing you can do, especially in high school, is find something you like to do and then pursue it. Um, we've also gotten a lot of questions about um, campus life, specifically relating to mental health, um, getting through school, um, achieving a good GPA. So I was just wondering, um, do you have any advice for incoming first year students about um, any mental health resources on campus or any activities that you could get involved with, um, especially since all courses or most courses are moved online. So um, I do know that um, I think every college they have like um, the Office of the Registrar and then like a student services team. And I'm pretty sure that every college should have kind of their own mental health resources. I do know for Trinity College, we had um, someone working for wellness. So you could kind of, um, I guess, book an appointment and just kind of like talk to them and they would just kind of help you through whatever you were going through. So I'm pretty sure all those services will be moved online. So um, it will be, I guess, easier even to access because you just have to like, talk to someone through your computer. Um, but there's definitely that. And I do know that U of T has been under some fire because of not having the best like mental health resources and whatnot. However, I think recently, like when after I just like joined my first year and even throughout my first year, I did kind of notice that the university was trying to um, give more resources to students. Like before classes on slideshows, there would be like information about um, mental health services. And I know that these will all be available online as well. So I think if you look that up, um, they're definitely gonna be available. Um, yeah, I think I can speak to this, to this topic pretty thoroughly from my experience in residence life. Um, just to give some background information, because I know this is something I didn't really understand coming to U of T, uh, what the college system is. Uh, you might have mentioned us, hear, heard us mention colleges such as Trinity or what's where they're in us. Um, at, at U of T, uh, you have the entire, the overarching university, but within the university, there's uh, constituent and uh, federated colleges, which is what uh, you as a student belong to a certain college um, for your experience at U of T. Uh, since there's so many students here, they kind of divide it up. It's kind of, I think they copied Oxford or something for this system. Um, so when you apply to U of T, uh, unless you're in a professional program like engineering, like me and Robert, you'll be, um, in a, you'll be assigned or applied to a college that will handle your uh, student life services. That includes mental health, residence, um, a registrar, a course enrollment, and stuff like that. Um, when it comes to mental health, especially, um, services can vary between colleges, but um, I think, although this year is going to look quite different, it's going to be a, a unique situation. Your first step as a 
your first person to go to is going to be your residence don. Uh, those are other university students that are there for you that have been through uh, the first year of university that experienced things at U of T that you might be going through um, and that can really talk to you and, and help you get through challenges. Um, I became a residence don because of the relationship I have with my don in first year and how he had helped me through uh, a couple of the challenges that I encountered. Um, and the mental health topic has become a very big um, big deal at U of T over the, the past few years. And they're making a concerted effort. Some people would really like to see more faster progress. Um, but uh, yeah, your first, the first line of defense is definitely residence dawn. Even if you're not living in residence and you're, you're a commuter, you'll still be part of a college. And you'll have, uh, some colleges have dedicated commuter dawns, especially for commuter students, or uh, just a, an office of student life that is open to anyone part of the college. So. Um, even though you might be online, uh, know there's resources there for you uh, and you're not alone going through the first year. Even though you might feel like uh, you're one of almost a million people, it's, uh, there's always someone there for you and there's always someone you can reach out to. Yeah, that was definitely well said. Uh, um, yeah, definitely going looking at uh, University of Toronto Student Life. I know they post all of their mental health resources um, there, there's quite a few. There's, I know there's a couple like 24 hour hotlines. Um, but ultimately, I think I want to just speak on kind of like courses and how to stay healthy. I'm um, obviously staying physically active, you know, going out with friends, having a life outside of school, and not just focusing too much on school because, you know, if things aren't going too well in the classroom, you still want something to look forward to at the end of the day. Um, so yeah, for me, honestly, I had a tough first year, my grades weren't the best. But, you know, it's not the end of the world. You have to remember that, um, you know, the opportunities don't go away. Your GPA honestly isn't that that important. If you're involved, if you find something that you really enjoy and you keep pursuing it, you're persistent, things will work out in the end. Um, don't focus on your GPA too much, I think is big. Everyone will keep telling you, you're not gonna have the same GPA as you do in high school. And it's definitely true. I know a lot of you will think, no, I'm gonna keep the same GPA, I'm not that person but almost certainly you're going to be that person, you know, your GPA is going to drop. It's not a big deal, but you know, things get easier down the line. Like each year you get used of how to study, you get used of how things work and things get easier. I don't know if it's classes get easier. You just get more used of the process, but you know, you're building your foundations the first year you're learning how to study again, because how you study in high school is very different how you study in university. So obviously your GPA is going to take a hit, but it's not a big deal. Just keep working at it, have a balanced life, and you know, just try to stay active, try to stay healthy. Uh, yeah, I just wanna echo everything that Gabriel said because that was all really, really great advice. Uh, I know I was personally in very much a similar boat where first year happens and you realize that everything is just kind of overwhelming in terms of school. And I think the big thing that Gabriel said, which echoes true, is that you know, if you make your work your life, what that means is that when your work takes a couple of stumbles or you, you make some mistakes in your work, which is bound to happen because that's part of going to university. What that means is that you've also made mistakes in your life and that can be really emotionally difficult and, and depressing to deal with. And so I think it's really, really key to kind of keep that balance. And also I know this is cliche, but it's true. Um, your GPA, especially in the first couple of years, it really doesn't just matter as much as it feels it matters at the time. And I mean, I know that's really hard advice to kind of like keep in perspective when you're in the moment, but I'd really just encourage you all to try your best and remember that, you know, I failed a test. It's not the end of the world. It doesn't really mean anything in the long run. So in the interest of time, it seems like all of our attendees have a lot of really good questions to ask our panelists. So we're going to skip the speed round and go straight into the Q&A from the attendees. So um, I received a question about um, talking to professors. So um, how do you start up a conversation with your professor and build up that relationship? from my um, experience so 
um, after every lecture, most professors, unless they have a class to teach right after, they'll stay um, in the lecture hall for like five, 10 minutes afterwards for any like follow up questions. So that's a great time to go and clarify anything that you didn't understand or just like start up a conversation about something you're interested in. Um, that's a really great way to get to know your professors. Um, I feel like there's this idea that first year profs won't care about you because you're one in like a thousand kids listening to their lecture. But I actually found that a lot of the professors got really excited when students came up to them afterwards to ask questions. So yeah, I think that's definitely a good way. And also going to office hours. I can't stress enough how helpful office hours is. You'll just get to know your prof, but you'll also just get to understand the material with so much more depth. And it just really helps. I think that a lot of the time when you like when we are confused about something where you just kind of say like oh I'll figure it out later or like it's probably a dumb question to ask but there is no such thing as a dumb question the profs will actually help you through um, profs or TAs whatever office hours you're going to um, and it's definitely super helpful. Yeah I would definitely agree that office hours are a good time. Um, you just kind of get that more personal one-on-one -on -one with the professor because obviously in lecture some of your lectures are almost like a thousand people, you know, if you're in con hall in your first year. So it's kind of difficult after class to ask some questions, but uh, definitely office hours are a good time. Um, a kind of underrated kind of resource, I think, is TAs. TAs are usually a little bit younger. A lot of them are like master's students. They're kind of doing research. And a lot of the questions you have, if they're not necessarily school related, but kind of career wise or academia wise, um, they'll have great answers to and they'll have a lot of people that they can put you in touch with. So it's not just like, for example, if you're looking for kind of a research opportunity, it's not only the professor that can kind of give you information on that. It's a lot of the times it's the kind of TAs that give you the most helpful advice and connect you to the right people because they've obviously they're much more recent in that process, but they still have a also definitely don't underestimate um yeah just to add on i would definitely recommend going to office hours but also if you have a question or if there's a concept that you don't understand um i would recommend just to go to the office hours right away don't wait until like the week of the midterm to go because then you have like a lot of students um ended up will end up going to those office hours on the weekend assignment is due or the week of a midterm so um, spread out your time. Time management is really important and just go when you have a question and don't wait till the last minute is what I would recommend. We've also received a lot of questions about what you're going to do after your undergrad. So um, just wondering, do you guys have anything planned and how has your university career kind of shaped your decision to what you're going to do after undergrad? I think I'll start with that because I can honestly say I really don't know uh, what uh, I, I want to do, but I am confident that like, you know, I have a lot of opportunities still out there. Uh, there's a lot of talk about GPA and something a lot of uh, students focus on early on, but I think a really important thing, especially that I, I tell a lot of first year students is changing your expectations and keeping your morale high. Um, just, you know, I think your goal should be to do the best that you can. I know for me, uh, coming in in first year, as Gabriel mentioned earlier, like, oh, you're, you're trying to keep the level of what you, your performance and what you did in high school, but it's, it's unlikely to happen. And it was a bit of a shock for me, but after a kind of a, a mental reframe, I think it really helped me um, kind of, I guess, like thrive in, in the later years. Um, to, do, to just uh, to do the best that you can is all you can ask for. Um, I think I mentioned earlier, I'm going on PUI, which is kind of a co-op program, which is something that uh, is valuable in the yeah, U of T, the engineering offers. Um, so I'm going to, well, I'm supposed to be going to Boston, Massachusetts just to work at a lab at Harvard University, which is another, I guess, great opportunity offered by U of T um, through this co-op program. And it, it shows that, you know, even if uh, you don't know what you want to do or you're you're kind of discouraged from what your first year or second year experiences are uh, there's still a lot of opportunities open for you especially at u of t because um yeah of, of kind of the name the university brings uh, with it around the world so yeah there's the doors don't shut even when you're in second and third year or, or even fourth so don't worry too much yeah, I just want to add on to a lot of those points in terms of, you know, the door's not shutting and you're not really knowing. I think that's something that a lot of people going into university 
universities do is like you know you think that you know where you're going to end up and you see university as just this like vehicle to get to where you, you want to end up like i know for me i was coming into my first year of engineering science saying i'm going to do these four years and i'm going to go become a theoretical physics physicist after and like this is just a background and then you fast forward four years and all of a sudden i'm going to go to grad school and do like a phd in philosophy which is something that's completely left field and completely uh, out of what i would have even imagined doing as a high schooler coming in so i guess like the really big advice about that is don't think too hard about where you're going to go next really try to focus on enjoying the moment that you're in you know enjoying all the new things that you're learning uh, exploring the sort of one-off random interests that you have because they're really valuable and really should be considered enjoying sort of the extracurricular experiences and the friends that you're making along the way and even though it kind of seems big and overwhelming that question of what do i do next by just kind of like living your life authentically that sort of dilemma slash uh debate it resolves itself so really try not to stress about what you're doing next especially not at this stage yeah definitely we're still even kind of as a fourth year going gonna graduate in a year like i don't have set in stone exactly what i want to do i have a general idea kind of want to go into the biotech industry but there's also so many doors that are still open to me you know getting an undergraduate degree is kind of like the first stepping stone to starting your career and especially speaking from a life side perspective usually just an undergraduate degree isn't all you need to really start your career so you know you might have further education you might go right into work but it's it's not kind of the end of the world if you don't have kind of work after your fourth year or you don't have an idea exactly of what you want to do because there's honestly so much that you can do. You have a good basis of education because in the life side program, that's really what it is. It's giving you a good basis. You have a little bit of specialization, but as you kind of go into your upper years, you realize more and more that, oh my God, I, there's so much more that I can learn. So there's so many good graduate programs that you can still go into, you know, being in Toronto, kind of a Mississauga area, the biotech industry is, is quite huge. So, that's always a resource for you there's so many hospitals if you want to go into medicine you know being in ontario there's lots of great med schools so you know you don't have to have an exact idea i know i changed what i wanted to do three or four times throughout my undergrad and still kind of not sure but you know as uh as robert said live in the moment enjoy the moment do what you can do what you're interested in and then eventually you'll find exactly what you want to do Yeah, just to touch, I see a lot of, I think, questions about medical school. Um, you know, medical school is definitely something you have to plan for right early, and I see a lot of, you know, I understand why there's a, a lot of questions about it. Um, to be honest, medical school is a very, you know, very competitive uh, program or thing to get into. Um, and at the end of the day, you can't really, can't really plan out what's going to, what's going to happen. As, as it comes to U of T, like, do I go to U of T because, or do I not go to U of T because it is going to hurt my chances at medical school? I'm not, I personally wouldn't make my decision on that based on that. Um, like it's definitely a challenging school. There's definitely uh, some challenges associated with the, the level of academics that are, are given here. Um, but I think it, it makes you, it's a trade-off. I think it, get, it makes you a, a better worker and it makes you, um, it gives you experiences you might not get somewhere else. So um, I know lots of students that have, gone through U of T and have continued on to medicine, which is because that's what they wanted to do. And uh, it's definitely a possibility for anyone if you, if you put the work in and, and you're really uh, interested in it. Yeah, I just want to add on to say that um, what you're interested in now can change. And like, that's definitely what happened to me. And a lot of my friends, they came into life science saying like, I'm gonna become a doctor. And like, a semester goes by, you find another interest or you find out like, maybe like, I don't actually enjoy this. Um, and that's completely okay. Um, in terms of like, personally, I don't exactly know what I want to do yet. But like, I'm only going to second year. So I know that I still have a lot of time to think about that and figure out what I'm really interested in. Um, but I think that it's easy to get caught up in the marks and it's easy to get, just think about like, what's a good job, like what's high paying, like those things. But it's really important to find what you're actually genuinely interested in um, because like, you're gonna have to put hours of work, like so many hours of work into this, it's going to be difficult. And the only thing that will get you through it is if you're genuinely passionate about it and if you're enjoying it throughout the process. 
Yeah, I definitely agree with what Nicole said. Make sure to find something that you're interested in because you are going to be spending a lot of time studying and um, doing your assignments and things like that. Um, it's also important just to keep um, your options open. Um, I know a lot of students, they think like, oh, I'm just going to do this and that's why I'm enrolling this program. But I think as you get older and you take more um, courses, you'll be able to find more things that you're um, interested in. I think that will definitely help you decide on what you want to major or what you want to pursue after graduation. Yeah, and just to piggyback on that, right, we all kind of seem to be emphasizing the fact that you need to find something that you're interested in, and part of that is taking courses. And so a really good strategy for that that I'd recommend is like when you pick courses, pick some stuff genuinely based on interests. And even if it's not something that your major or program typically does, like go and do it anyway, because that could be how you figure out these things about yourself that you would never see coming. Yeah, a lot, a lot of uh, kind of finding your interest is really trial and error. So, you know, if you take a course or you're in a program and you don't enjoy it, like don't see it as time wasted. That was actually valuable time figuring out what you actually wanted to do. So, for example, for me, I thought I wanted to be a psych major or minor or major actually. Yeah, initially. But then I kind of realized it's halfway through. That's not really for me. And then I didn't see it as time wasted. I just kind of uh, refocused myself and went down another path. So, you know, it's, it's really just trial and error, job experience, you know, um, just a lot of experiences is what will really tell you what you like and what you don't like. So it's really a lot of exploring, especially in university, that's really what your undergrad is for. So, you know, have an open mind, just try everything. If something looks interesting, give it a shot. If it works out, then you know, and if it doesn't, then you know it also. So, um, yeah, just explore around. And the very last question of the evening that we have time for today, um, what made you choose U of T specifically and what factors went into your decision? Yeah, just to kind of reiterate, I think what the first question of the night, um, to be more specific, uh, with, so I got into biomedical engineering at Waterloo and then engineering science at U of T, which are my two, I think, main options uh, other than I guess the health side biomed at McMaster, which are the three schools that were mentioned. And honestly, for me, it was coming to U of T and getting to know the students, um, not necessarily the, you know, the, the reputation of the university or like the, the campus there. Um, I just really enjoyed talking to the students that I met uh, from the en engineering science program at U of T. And I think the best thing that you can do to make the decision that's right for you is to visit the campus if it's possible for you, or just to reach out to people that have had experience on the campus. And I'll help you judge whether, yeah, whether you see yourself spending four years of your life there, um, interacting with the community, interacting with the people there. Um, and yeah, so for me, it was definitely getting to talk to upper years in the engineering science program uh, that, that led me to choose that over the other two schools. All right, so that's all the time that we have for today. Thank you so much to the attendees for coming and for the panelists for your great answers to all the questions. It's nice to see all the different activities that you're involved with on campus. Um, we will try to send out some important links um, to some of the main questions that we've seen a lot throughout just to um, help give a little bit of guidance into the admissions process to U of T. And we'll also send out a recording of this panel um, alongside some links to future panels for different universities that we'll do. Um, if you would like to email me for more information about the webinars, um, my email is just my name, mira.chopra at stemfellowship.org. Thank you so much to everybody for coming out tonight and I hope you have a great rest of the week. <laughs>